Welcome to Nature's CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. I'm Dr. Tom Stolgren. This is episode 11, Blood-Sucking Sea Lampreys. A sea lamprey is an ancient organism that has a parasitic stage that attaches itself to fish. It does this with a circular disc of over 100 teeth and a razor-sharp tongue that latches onto the fish and kind of sucks it dry. They get up to three feet long in the Atlantic Ocean, where they're native, and of course, that lends itself to, you guessed it, horror movies, Blood Lake, the attack of the killer lampreys. The lamprey population in this river is way above normal. Just call me bear. I can't afford to lose any tourists. Bear, we have to close the lake now. Oh my God. These lambreys are hungry and they're dangerous. You'll get this done in two days. These lambreys. You get the idea. But how do those sea lampreys get from the Atlantic Ocean into the Great Lakes? Well, through a series of man-made canals. They made it to Lake Ontario in the early 1800s, but they couldn't quite get to Lake Erie because of Niagara Fall. But then came a little end around with the Whalen Canal that in the early 1800s connected Lake Ontario to Lake Erie, bypassing Niagara Falls, making it easy for the sea lampreys to invade the Great Lakes. And they did. In short order, they went throughout the entire ecosystem. And the fish there had no idea what was coming. And so lake trout populations plummeted, and they were almost extinct in 1960 because of the rising lamprey populations. What happened? Scientists went to work. They started creating electric fences and traps and barriers to prevent the lampreys from spreading. But in 1958-1968, scientists created chemical compounds and poisons that worked only on the sea lampreys. And that changed everything. But they had to test 6,000 compounds before finding the right ones. 6,000. That's perseverance. That's persistence. Trial and error and error and error. They never gave up, those scientists. They also developed sterilization programs for male lampreys. They would put them back into the Great Lakes, and then the females would waste their eggs. And they worked on collecting different kinds of hormones and pheromones from the lampreys to attract them to the traps. This is a huge success story. They monitored the lamprey populations over time, and they also monitored the lake trout populations over time, and guess what happened? The lake trout populations zoomed back as the lampreys came under control, and the lamprey populations have stayed quite low, saving a seven or eight billion dollar fishery in the Great Lakes and all the tourism that's attracted to it. So a few million dollars worth of research saved billions of dollars for the economy. You do the math. So the next time you see a science fiction movie, remember the science behind the fiction. And unlike some Hollywood stars, scientists learn from their mistakes. Hey, thanks for joining us on Nature CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. If you have an idea for a story, shoot me an email. Check out our websites. And in the meantime, get out there and save the world. Thanks.